Hi everyone, our subject is sinus infection. We will discuss the conditions which is due to infection and need surgery. The first subject will be brain abscess. Brain abscess is about 8% of all intracranial space occupying lesions. But it is less than this, it's about 2% in developed countries. Look at this CT scan. At the CT scan of the brain shows axial CT scan of the brain shows this hypodense area. When we say hypodense and hyperdense, this is in comparison with normal brain. So with normal brain it's more uh, black, so it's hypodense. Look at the hypodense area. This hypodense area may be infarction, maybe tumor and maybe abscess. So we need next step either MRI or contrast. Look at the next slide. For the same patient, this is the next uh, uh, step with contrast study. CT scan with contrast, you see the wall of the abscess. Now the content of the abscess is pus, and this is the wall of the abscess, it's enhancing, enhancing with contrast, surrounding by edema, causing pressure effect. Look at the midline shift. This is the fox, it is compressing the fox and causing pressure on the brain. So this is brain abscess. Risk factors for abscess in the brain uh, the most important and most uh, common one is pulmonary abscess. So in pulmonary abscess and lung infection, you should treat lung infection because it may cause uh, uh, brain abscess. The next uh, risk factor is AV fistula. Congenital cyanotic heart disease It is one of the important risk factors. But nowadays, we see less cases of congenital cyanotic heart disease. congenital heart disease, we treat them as brain abscess. They treat the congenital heart disease by endovascular, by surgery. They treat the congenital heart disease. That's why the complications like brain abscess is less. Immune compromised uh, patient is a risk factor for uh, brain abscess. Uh, chronic sinusitis or titis media. Also, uh, all these are uh, regarding as risk factor for uh, brain abscess. Dental procedure sometimes is a risk factor for brain abscess, especially in immune compromised uh, patients. How the microorganism reach the brain? We have many ways to reach the to for the microorganism to reach the brain. The most important way is by the blood, by blood hematogenous. So this is the most common and most important. In adult, for example, in chest, uh, the chest is the most common like in lung abscess or bronchitis in pyma. In children, congenital cyanotic heart disease with right to left shunt. In immune compromised patient like HIV and toxoplasmosis, the next way is contagious like sinusitis or tight media. So it's not through the blood, it is some Somewhere in the uh, head near the brain, there is infection. For example, uh, uh, otitis media, mastoiditis, sinusitis. This. Uh, uh, what are the responsible microorganisms? Clinical features uh, of uh, brain abscess. Clinical features of brain abscess, it's like any space occupying lesion. You may see feature of raised intracranial pressure. 
Investigations of a brain abscess, you need blood investigations. Uh, in a blood uh, test, you see leukocytosis, raised ESR and C-reactive protein. Usually, the ESR and C-reactive protein uh, are normal in initial stages of brain abscess. Actually, we will not discuss the brain abscess in details. Uh, in, we have staging of brain abscess. In uh, beginning, you may see normal C-reactive protein and ESR. CT scan and MRI also this is depend on which stage you detect the brain abscess. We have also features of a specific stage of brain abscess in CT and also in MRI. But uh, you, uh, usually in CT and MRI you may see and usually you, you see in, in late stages ring enhancement. Treatment of brain abscess. First, you should identify the bacterial organism. This is important point because if you detect the organism, you can choose the suitable antibiotics. And usually this done by a cultural ancestry test. IV antibiotics may be needed for about uh, two months. Surgery is important in brain abscess. Usually we have two types of surgery, either drainage and excision. Treat the cause. For example, if the patient has congenital cirrhotic heart disease, you should treat the risk factor because there is a risk of recurrence. Also, you may uh, need anticonvulsant therapy. About the drainage and excision, Surgical treatment, we have two ways of surgical treatment, needle aspiration and surgical excision. In needle aspiration, you just do one bare hole, one opening in the bone, called clinostomy or bare hole. Through this bare hole, you aspirate the pus. You uh, aspirate the pus by special needle called brain needle or brain cannula. And this is maybe the only uh, surgical way how to treat the brain uh, abscess. This is maybe the, the final treatment, surgical treatment, and then followed by antibiotics. And sometimes it will followed by surgical excision. In excision, you remove the cyst as well encapsulated tumor. And the length of antibiotics in excision, it is less than, uh, uh, shorter than the needle aspiration. In needle aspiration, may be perf performed under local anesthesia. But usually the craniotomy and surgical excision, it is need uh, GA. If necessary, may be only surgical treatment, as we said, but sometime must be followed with excision. This way is recommended when the abscess is multiple and it is deep in the brain and with thin wall. So if it's multiple, look at this look at this CT scan. This is one one of our patient. Look at the uh, CT. There is hypodense area and uh, it is in the right frontoparietal area this is the uh, abscess and it is quite big it is near uh, the cortex so this patient is suitable for excision and also we can try needle aspiration we did needle aspiration look at the bare hole this is side of the bare hole complications uh, of uh, Complications of abscess uh, with abscess rupture, for example, ventriculitis, meningitis, venous sinus thrombosis may happen, CSF obstruction, hydrocephalus may happen, transdontoral herniation, this is one of the complications. Prognosis of uh, 
the brain abscess, it is the mortality with uh, appropriate therapy is about 10%. Permanent deficit about 50%. Subdural impairments. In subdural impairment, it's like brain abscess, but the collection of pus, it's not inside the parenchyma of the brain. It is inside, it's just under the, the dura. It is uncommon. It's not like brain abscess. Although the brain abscess is not common, but the subdural, it's less common. Sinusites or mastoiditis may be the cause. These patients are usually toxic. You may see systemic manifestation of infection. Uh, it's not like brain abscess. With rapidly progressive neurological signs, it's more rapid than brain abscess. A depressed level of consciousness and uh, hemiparesis may be seen. Epilepsy also is one of the clinical features. Look at this CT scan, it's again axial CT scan of the brain. Look at the collection of pus uh, under the dura. This is subdural impairment. Again, the treatment, the treatment again in subdural impairment is like intracranial abscess. Uh, uh, we need excision of uh, post-traumatic meningitis. This is also maybe a surgical condition, especially in head injury. It's occur in about 1 to 20 percent of patients with moderate to severe head injury. When we say moderate or severe, this is according to Glasgow Coma Scale. To amygdala no mama has head injury. Kamenpial and mild, kamenpial and moderate, kamenpial and severe head injury. So in moderate and severe, it's about 1 to 20 persons of uh, uh, cases. Uh, treatment of uh, uh, CSF uh, leak, which is causing meningitis, usually uh, need antibiotics uh, according to cultural and sensitivity test. This is uh, there is high rate of infection with the organisms in which is inside the nasal cavity. Surgical treatment, uh, we need to repair the neural tear. Why there is CSF leak? That's due to neural tear in the base of skull. So we need to repair this, to suture this, to seal this uh, CSF leak. Uh, osteomyelitis of the skull is rare. The skull is resistant to osteomyelitis, but may happen. Hematogenous infection is rare also. Usually it's due to infection of uh, air sinus or penetrating trauma or from skull abscess. What you need to treat Treatment of osteomyelitis of the skull, antibiotic alone are usually uh, not curative. We need to remove the infected skull, and this is called crinectomy. You remove the infected skull until you reach the normal skull, and usually this uh, followed by antibiotics until uh, sometime 12 weeks. And when you remove the bone, you may uh, face a condition we call it bone deficit or or skull defect. Sorry, skull defect. So in skull defect, you need uh, craniplasty. The next step is to do craniplasty after one year, for example, or six month uh, post-operative. So uh, uh, treatment uh, of skull infection or osteomyelitis, you should remove the infected uh, skull. You send for cultural sensitivity, you send for histopathology to exclude any tumors, and then uh, followed by antibiotics, uh, and also uh, to uh, manage this bone defect, we should do cranioplasty after uh, at least six months 
why it's Christmas to prevent uh, infection. Spinal infection. In the spine, we have this three part, either bone, disc, or nerve tissue. So infection in one of this uh, element uh, called spine infection. Uh, so spinal infection may be uh, vertebral osteomyelitis, uh, either pyogenic or non-pyogenic, like uh, TB, or epidural abscess, or discitis. In discitis, it's either spontaneous or post-operative. Uh, In spinal TB, or Pooch disease, Actually, it's uh, not uh, so common, but uh, it's more common in third uh, world countries. As usually symptomatic for many months. So if you see a patient with back pain, especially uh, immune compromised patient, diabetic patient, for example, with chronic back pain, you should think of uh, such infection. And affected more than one level so you may see many levels, and the most common is uh, lower thoracic and upper lumbar. So it is between the thoracic and lumbar region. Has a predilection of vertebral body. It's affecting the anterior part of the spine, not the posterior element. Sparing the posterior element. So as abscess is common. Definitive diagnosis required biopsy. To diagnose, we need uh, biopsy. And usually, we can do this percutaneous under local anesthesia with sometimes x ray or uh, CT guide. Good results may be obtained with either medical treatment or surgery. Surgery may be needed, for example, when there is collection of pulse, when there is co fracture of the spine. Uh, when there is pressure in on the cord or nerve tissue. So it is more common in this area, uh, in uh, lumbo, uh, thoraco lumbo. Uh, this is a fracture in the spine, pathological fracture after TB, after TB infection. Look at the fracture and causing severe compression over uh, the cord, the spine cord. This is the MRI of one of uh, our patients before many, many years. Look at uh, the typical uh, side of uh, TB, it is, it is in the thoracolumbar area, affecting the body. The posterior element is more health, it's healthy. It's not like the anterior one, and causing compression on the uh, nerve, on the, on the cord. Uh, so what you need to do, we should prove that this is TB or not. We need a biopsy. Actually, actually we did the biopsy under CT guided. This is the CT machine. And uh, we uh, uh, hydrated cyst of uh, the brain. Hydrated cyst can occur everywhere in the body. In most common site is liver, lung, but may happen everywhere. So hydrated cyst in the brain. I will show you some pictures. The cause, you know, it is quinococcus uh, granulosa. CNS involvement is about 3%. Primary cysts are usually solitary. Secondary cysts, for example, from embolization from cardiac uh, cyst uh, that rupture or from uh, atrogenic rupture of uh, cerebral cyst are usually multiple. So maybe single, maybe multiple. Uh, presentation, uh, like any specific spine lesion, increase uh, ICP, uh, intracranial pressure, and uh, seizure or focal deficit. Treatment, surgical removal. The surgery, the surgery for 
high data says this is one of uh, the cases which is uh, with high data cyst in this patient has multiple high data cysts okay uh, and it was presented uh, with uh, look at this is right uh, posterior parietal area multiple high data cysts uh, presented with seizure we did op operation for this patient these are the multiple cysts uh, is very well it also, it also was before many years uh, this is post operative without uh, deficit the next uh, the next subject look at look at the CT scan now we finish the infection look at the CT scan axial CT of uh, unconscious patient there is big space occupying lesion due to spontaneous hematoma actually the prognosis is very bad I want to discuss a, con a condition which is called brain death or neurological determined death brain death by definition it is uh, irreversible should be irreversible so it is total and irreversible loss of function of the cerebral hemisphere and the brain stem should be irreversible otherwise it's not brain death the patient may continue to have some spinal reflexes but this is not excluding brain death if ventilation and circulation are maintained artificially, the heart uh, the heart, kidney and liver may continue to function for some hours or days, but after brainstem death has occurred, cardiac arrest will follow usually within two weeks. So the important point in brain death should be total uh, loss of brain function and also it is irreversible. This is how to diagnose the brain death. Uh, now diagnose of brain death, the reversible cause of coma should be excluded. This is the first step. The diagnosis of brain death is very important. I will tell you why it's important. Even it's more important than death. The brain death, the diagnosis, it's very critical. Like, what are the condition which is reversible, cause reversible uh, coma or loss of consciousness? For example, like hypothermia. So, the temperature should be above 32. No electrolyte acid-based endocrine disturbance. Okay, the patient is not under effect of any GA, any drug, or any muscle uh, relaxant. You should exclude shock, toxicity. You ex should exclude all this. And then a committee should perform the test, not one doctor, a committee. What are the findings we should uh, find in brain death? These findings of in brain death, it's very important. We should know every single one. And uh, all these findings should be present. For example, if one of these findings is absent in brain death, we exclude brain death. This is not brain death. So, what are the signs? First, no motor response to deep central pain. There is no uh, painful uh, response to painful stimulation. Fixed pupil absent of light reflex. The pupils are not reacting to light. 
Absent of corneal reflex. Absent of oculocephalic reflex. When you move the head, the eyes not move. This is called those eyes. Absent of ocular vestibular reflex. When you inject icy water, cold water inside the ear, external canal of the ear, usually uh, in normal person there is nystagmus. In brain there, there is no nystagmus. This is what we mean by absent ocular uh, vestibular reflex. No motor response within the cranial nerve distribution can be uh, elicited or by uh, adequate stimulation of the any uh, somatic area. No cuff, no gag reflex. How you test this? For example, for the cuff, you can uh, uh, do, uh, for example, uh, suction through the, uh, the tracheal tube or through the tracheostomy, there is no cuff reflex. Gag reflex, you can move the endotracheal tube. If uh, there is gag reflex, you will see it. In brain death, there is no gag reflex. No spontaneous respiration. If, if you remove the ventilator and you reach the PCO2 uh, mercury, there is no spontaneous respiration. And finally, these are clinical and finally uh, EEG does not detect brain stem activity and also brain arteriogram show total lack, lack of uh, cerebral blood flow. Look at this uh, angiogram. Uh, you see the left vertebrae but no more blood supply to the brain. This is a case of brain death. So one of the tests is angiography of the brain. Look at this angiography. Uh, this is normal brain and this is brain death. No more blood supply to the brain. Uh, EEG, uh, it's one of the tools used for uh, diagnosis of brain death. In brain death, you see straight line. No more activity. Why diagnosis of brain death is important? Why we say it need committee? Because this condition, the patient or the person with brain death, is a candidate for donation. So uh, there is no cure uh, brain death. It's, it's not a curable condition. It is irreversible. So when you diagnose, that's why we need committee to diagnose. When it's diagnosed as brain death, this person is a candidate for uh, donation. That's why the diagnosis is very important. If you diagnose it wrong, this is caused disaster. In congenital uh, hydrocephalus, what is the cause of each one? Setting sun sign. It's not local cause. <clears throat> it is a central cause. Uh, for example, treat the skull osteomyelitis. In the surgery, mid surgery, cranectomy, you remove the infected bone until reach the normal bone and antibiotics, and then we follow by chiroplasty. Hello, no talk. For example, this is one of the uh, single choice uh, question. To diagnose brain death, I mean, it's the word mark. You may need all these following, except a can blood test, EEG, cold water, CT scan of the brain, none of above, come in. Variable blood test, blood test will chill the brain. No amount you should exclude toxicity, for example. EEG, EEG manner, cold water, what she manner, we inject it inside the air to see nystagmus. Okay. Seat scan man available in death? No, not need seat scan. Hit by CT scan on the What's in CT and Jonak in there? You know, what's in CT scan again? So this is, you choose seat scan. We not need seat scan.
And thank you very much. Thank you. This time, how's it going? Shalom, I'm Hazrake. I'm going to do this time. Let them know, but I'll be here. We'll 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 be here. We